Okay, we're recording. So welcome Cornelia Elbridge. It's such a pleasure to have you here. And by way of introduction, Cornelia is the founder and director of the Institute of Sensory Motor Art Therapy and the School for Initiatic Art Therapy. She is an art therapist, a practitioner and a trainer of, um, and also a somatic experiencing practitioner. With over 40 years of experience, Cornelia has published two books, which have been translated into numerous other languages, has written several essays, and recently a training video on sensory motor art therapy. She's a teacher throughout Australia and internationally. And so I warmly welcome you, and it is a great pleasure to have you here, Cornelia. Hello, Nikki. It's great to do this with you. <laughs> um, I, I understand you want to know a little bit about how to deal with anxiety, you know, from an art therapy perspective. Is that correct? Beautiful. That would be amazing. Yeah. And uh, SEP means a somatic experiencing trauma therapist. So my work is very trauma informed. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you know, someone comes with problems, my first question is really safety. Yeah, safety mm -hmm. first. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and especially if there are issues around anxiety and fear and hypervigilance and inner tension or continuous nervousness, sleeplessness, uh, jumpiness, uh, or uh, numbness would be the other thing, you know, what psychologically is called dissociation, where you actually don't feel yourself or certain parts of yourself. That is primarily an indicator uh, that something has happened that made you feel very unsafe. Mm. So what can you do uh, to feel more safe and that is really the first and foremost in yeah you know, what you know what to do so i thought we start with uh, showing you a number of art therapy exercises uh, that can support feeling more secure fantastic yeah and yeah, and one one art therapy exercise that uh, I, for example, offer uh, that is really called the safe place. And usually I use just a piece of cardboard or a picnic plate and very often do it with uh, clay, but it can be any other material. It can also be um, just cardboard or plasticine or simply painting it or even simply imagining it. But mm. it has to be a place where you have the physical sensation of being safe or a memory of being really safe. Mm. And that can be very simple. For, for example, one of my safe places is my bed. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, does have to be, yeah, something very complicated. Um, yeah. a, another body memory I have when I, yeah, my grandfather passed away when I was five years old, mm. but I have a body memory of sitting on his lap mm. and, and feeling utterly safe and loved. But it was primarily this, it, it was like a, more than a physical safety was like a spiritual safety. Mm, yeah. Completely held. Yeah. And uh, that is a memory that I have many times gone back to in times of crisis. Mm. And imagining it, it really helped me. But I've also created it. Yes. Um, another one that I've got here is um, I've got a tree behind my house. Oh. And so, so I hope you can see it. Yeah? So yeah. the base is, is clay. And then I've used 
bark and and feathers and, and this tree is i uh, um it is more than a tree for me it is um like a being you know like a uh to it's a very powerful tall nature spirit and mm. sometimes when i've been very stressed or anxious i've just gone to that tree and i've actually made this tree as a reminder and it sits on my desk oh it's beautiful so so, so that is also one option yeah mm. or what what you can do yeah um another one and i have to to see how i can show these to you so you can see them i'm just tilting the camera a bit perfect yeah um, these are little toy animals that i have sitting in my work room and i've got lots more there's a snake there's a platypus a crocodile a pelican, a whale, a butterfly, an eagle, and a parrot. And when clients cannot think of a safe place, or in addition to the safe place, I ask them to choose one of these animals, mm. or if they can think of a totem an animal that uh, yeah, has particular significance and then think about what this animal does really well. Oh. For example, a dog has a really good nose, so it can sniff things, yeah? <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, the, the pelican, for example, is, um, is someone who feeds her young with dedication. Yeah. So you could look at that, yeah. Or uh, yeah, the 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 whale has just this incredible deep oceanic knowledge. Yeah. And and you can ask your your animal for help or for guidance. And what would your animal do in this situation? And uh, what, you know, how can it help you and guide you out of this? Mm. Um, so the focus is very much in looking at actively how can I be safe and what can I do in order to feel better. Because the when we are anxious or in a fear-driven you know, inner space, what happens very easily is that we run with the fear. Mm. And then people ask us also of what happened, yeah? And then you tell the story and you actually accelerate the activation. Mm. In, um, and it can actually be, you know, what's called re-traumatizing, yeah? Mm. Increasingly by yeah, going further and further into what happened. Pens, yeah, or you could call it simply the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, um, yes, yeah, somatic experience in this particular trauma therapy, I've learned, and that um, I use very much in conjunction with, uh, yeah, the art therapy. Mm. In that, yeah, here is the trauma vortex. Yeah. And here is the healing vortex. Yeah. So um, when I talk about the safe place, for example, yeah, or the totem animal, or any kind of activity that you can do that makes you feel better, mm -hmm. and whether that is going to bed or walking on the beach or hugging your tree or drawing a mandala, yeah, or um, it is strengthening the healing vortex. Beautiful. So when you then go into trauma exploration or what has happened, you have here is the trauma and here's the healing. And you go a little bit into the trauma and then you go into the healing and then you go a little bit into the trauma and then you go into the healing. Mm. That way it's, it becomes manageable 
Mm. You can gradually process you know, what has happened without getting overwhelmed again. Or stuck. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, uh, this one is another little toy that I love to demonstrate yeah. things with you know, because awesome. it is so easy to understand. Yeah. Uh, so, so when you have this movement, yeah, this is basically, I hope you can see it well. Yes, yeah. this well. Is what every cell in our body does. Yeah, this is the life movement. Mm. And this is the rhythm of our heartbeat. This is the what our breath does and every muscle does and every cell does. And it is contraction and expansion, contraction mm. and expansion. When something bad happens, you know, we do either uh, this, we really contract and get stuck or mm. we freak out and then we get stuck here. Mm. Yeah, and there's not much point in looking over and over and over again on what got you stuck here or, or whoops, what got you <laughs> stuck here, yeah? But it, it's more about how can I find my rhythm again? Mm. Yeah, that so I can start breathing again so my, my muscles can stop being braced here yeah, and everything mm. held in my body um, yeah, my my gut all being upset and uh, you know all being stuck in these loops in the head where I'm thinking over and over and over the same mm. scenario, mm. and it really helps in that case to look at here is my healing vortex and here is the bad stuff mm. happening. Yeah, mm. so um, yeah, whatever. Uh, you know, like I'm now being strong enough you know, to deal with this. Mm. Yeah, so, so they can be gradually yeah, woven yeah, to, to, together. Yeah. Um, Peter Levine, who developed somatic experiencing, um, he uh, observed this with animals. Yeah, so, so his basis of his study is with animals because what he found out that uh, what we call trauma is something that affects our brain stem, which is the part in the brain that we actually share with crocodiles and fish. Mm. Yeah, so it's very, very ancient yeah. and it's our survival system. Yeah, and that actually doesn't respond at all to thinking. Mm. So, so we can walk around and look around and think we are safe, but our brainstem, if it's still activated, will tell us a different story. So, so we have all the physical symptoms of activation, for example, even though what happened, happened years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. And and what he said, what animals come, how animals come out of this, and what we need to do, is we need to find an active response mm -hmm. to overwhelmedness and helplessness. Okay. Yeah. So that's what gets us unstuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so it's this. Uh, what do you need to do? How can you do this? Mm. Yeah. And um, and yeah, that is is simply um, 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 yeah. For example, um, yeah, yeah. Where is the the, the healing vortex? <laughs> I often think, I, I often just move my body, like even getting up from a, a desk at work is a, is, can be a really frozen stance, can't yeah. it? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I'll often just move my shoulders and go, oh, okay, I'd forgotten breathing, to breathe. Breathing deeply, yeah, mm. or going for a walk, yeah, or uh, having a dance. Sometimes I dance. Yeah? Oh, just I do too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make it off, literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so, so it's whatever works for you, but it's really important to, to work out 
you know, what's, what is your way, you know, to mm. out of it, yeah? And, uh, you know, for some people that can be um, just reading a book where it's about drawing with a non-dominant hand. Mm, mm. So to just have a sheet of paper for me, that would be my left hand and not drawing with my right hand, but you know, then just drawing with my left hand. Mm. Yeah. And just letting that talk, yeah, and to express mm. all the emotion that is there. Yeah. And, uh, but it always with uh, uh, paying attention that yeah, it doesn't get too much, that there's not much too much trauma activation. And if that happens to go back to yeah, taking a walk, getting up, moving, uh, yeah, or holding your animal or, you know, holding your favorite stone or yeah, doing something that makes you feel safe. Yeah. Mm. That's, a, that's a lovely collection of little tools and reminders and I've got things dotted all over my house for my safety Exactly. It can be a different thing on a different day or a different place. It's about collecting a whole lot of tools together, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And and uh, and and really working with 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 people in you know, some people really need to to focus foremost on finding these tools because mm. there's no sense of that they have tools. Yeah. Mm. Especially for those, it's really actually dangerous to go into. Yeah, what's called trauma exploration. Yeah, mm. that you need stabilizing first and mm. discovering what makes me feel better. Mm. Yeah, so they can, when they go to the bad place, actually access their yeah, resources mm. under stress. Yeah, mm. the, 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 it's always like when you're stressed, can you act? Yeah, access it. Yeah. For example, a really good tool for me is meditation, but when I'm stressed, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I actually, yeah, like then meditation becomes something really difficult. Whereas when I go for a walk, yeah, and take my shoes off and walk on the beach, yeah, um, that's what helps, yeah, or when I have a dance, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I think you've given some lovely, lovely ideas and I we can so. develop them at another point too. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much for your time, Cornelia. It's a great honour to have you here and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to have you. Yeah. I'll stop recording.